الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا ثم ما بعد الامام النووي رحمه الله تعالى في رياض الصالحين يقول في باب الورع the chapter on asceticism or leading an ascetic life قال وعن وترك وترك الشبهات ان abandon all doubtful matters that's the name of the chapter actually قال وعن عقبة بن الحارث رضي الله تعالى عنه أنه تزوج ابنة لأبي إيهاب بن عزيز عقبة بن عامر he said that he one day he, he married a woman a daughter of إيهاب بن عزيز فأتته امرأة فقالت إني قد أرضعت عقبة والتي قد تزوج بها so one time or later on after this marriage was established right now a lady she came and she claimed that she suckled both when they were young, meaning basically she's saying that both of you brothers. are considered brother and sister. Through foster, basically, uh, any, uh, breastfeeding, they became brother and sister, meaning you cannot be together in marriage. Fa'uqba, now he's in a big dilemma. First of all, he got married this woman. He never knew that he had actually any opportunity to you know, be in, in such a relationship. He didn't know who that woman was coming out of nowhere. Saying, listen, I'm your mother, you know, by breastfeeding. And I did the same thing to the girl, so you cannot marry her. So now has become a doubtful matter. His marriage, all of a sudden, that he established his future, perhaps, on it. He was planning and building all these dreams and hopes, having children, blending family with this woman. And suddenly, all of a sudden, all these dreams are crushed. Because of some random lady from the community coming to him, listen, I... I know that your brother and sister is by breastfeeding. So Uqba فَقَالَ لَهَا قَالَ مَا أَعْلَمُ أَنَّكِ يَرْضَعْتِنِي وَلَا أَخْبَرْتِنِي He says, I don't know, I don't even have any idea that you've ever uh, uh, suckled me when I was young. And uh, you've never told me that before when I was يعني, uh, growing up. فَرَكِبَ إِلَى رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ بِالْمَلِينَ So this Uqba رضي الله تعالى Now that the, the subject has become a doubtful matter, what is he going to be doing? Sitting at home and just, you know, whine about it? Or just said, you know what, I don't trust this lady and forget it. I'm going to continue with my marriage the way it was established. What should this person do? If you were in his position, what would you do? You are going to have to kill this doubt. And that's what he did. So he took a ride and he went to Medina. And he asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. فَسَأَلَ النَّبِيَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمُ Said, Ya Rasulullah, that's, what, that's the case. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told him, قَالَ كَيْفَ وَقَدْ قِيلْ which means, he said to him, how can you, basically like saying, how can you continue with this marriage after you have been told? Now, even if the man is going to uh, argue with the Prophet you see, the Prophet did not necessarily tell him that she is right or wrong or it's true. It's basically, if it has become a doubtful matter, Particularly in a subject like marriage, you should not be establishing any relationship if there is any doubt in that. Even if it was zero point whatever percent, there is much a chance that you guys might not be halal to each other. You cannot even marry her because of this hadith, hadith in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the property told him, Kayfa wa means what are you gonna do about it after she told she told you that? As if he's telling him, believe her. And from this the ulama the ulama, they took actually a ruling in terms of shahad and giving testimonies. They said when it comes to matters that women are well known for, one testimony of one lady is sufficient. You don't have to, take, to get ten ladies to testify for this issue. He could, have, he could have asked, he says, bring me someone else to prove you, to prove what you said is true. But he didn't, because one testimony of one lady in matters like these will be sufficient. So the Prophet told him, just believe her. فَفَارَقَهَا عُقْبَى so Uqba, he had to divorce, to, to divorce this lady, separate from her. She married someone else after him. So again, from this we learn that if there is anything that has any doubt in it, that doesn't mean to take the halal side of it. Today, most people, when it comes to shubuhat, doubtful matters, you tell them, Yaqib, but why do you do this? It's shubha. There's a doubt in this issue. They tell you, yeah, alhamdulillah, it's not haram though. <laughs> But it's not halal either. So why would you outweigh the halal you know, aspect of it over the chance it might be haram? You have to balance it. And this is what we call al-wara. Al-wara, to live, to live an ascetic life, is to leave that which is halal out of fear that it might be haram or it might even lead, materialize into something haram. That's what wara is. 
And as a hadith coming after that, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said to, he said, Al-Hasab bin Ali, actually the grandson of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Qala, hafizhtu min Rasulillahi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I remember from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when, when he was a child, six, seven years old. He said, I remember from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam a statement he told me, da' ma yaribuk ila ma la yaribuk. Which means, he said to him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said, leave what causes you doubt and turn to what does not cause you any doubt. If you have doubt in anything, don't just sit there, you know, forever just thinking, is there any way to make it halal? Is there any escape from this haram part of it? And so on. Instead, just stay out of it. Just say, Allah provide us with that which is best. And just get out of it. And stay out of this. If you lead a life like this, I guarantee you always have a clean heart, inshallah ta'ala, and a sound iman, bi'ilnillahi azza wa jal. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam. Any question, Jamal? So, so the lady she came to Uqba, she 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 was the mother of the uh, Uqba a wife, right? No, she was she was a foster mother, um for Rada, um, for both of them. Right. She was uh, basically like they call them they call her wit nurse, murdia bil arabiyani. To yudfa lahal mal hatta tord al atfal. She is paid to do the job basically, right. and she would be passing by maybe half of the kids in the neighborhood. And she knew both of them. She knew that she had, she, she suckled those two, two, uh, two children, or two like, the husband and wife in this case. So when he told her, خلاص, I mean, there is no uh, escape out of it. Allah understand. Now, don't ask me what happened to Uqba afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that he got married, inshallah, and he lived happily ever after. But we don't know the details after that. Yes? What happened to Uqba afterwards? <laughs> 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 Actually, um, um, you said when we have a doubtful uh, doubt about something, we we should avoid it, but is that after uh, exploring uh, what, the, what the people knowledge now, so if, if there is a matter that I'm not sure about, mm -hmm. I mean, do we leave it temporarily and ask around, ask a scholar that we trust, mm -hmm. to find out what the ruling is before, like, off by did with Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? No, the question is, if you are faced with, a, with a, a doubtful matter, should you abandon the whole thing altogether, or should I first <coughs> investigate and then make a decision? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, well, first of all, when it comes to doubtful matter, the best and safest position is to abstain from taking position at the moment when you're not sure about it. So don't say, well, it's still doubtful, so I'm going to start like, do it until I get, inshallah, any confirmation for being halal or haram. No, you stop first. Then you go and you ask, and based on what you get from Ahlul Ilm, you can make your decision, inshallah. So if they tell you, it's haram, خلاص, stay away from it. And if they tell you it's halal and you trust their knowledge and their deen, inshallah, then that would be good. InshaAllah ta'ala. Wallahu a'ala. Khair inshaAllah. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Ashara la ilaha anta astaghfiruka wa atubu alayhi. Zakallah khair. Ghadan inshaAllah.